The Sitam Kitale Fellowship started in 2014 as an SG when brethren were meeting in town. I joined the group in 2019 when uh, they were meeting at a federal station in town in the weekday for a safari group. Then we grew. Something that began as a Bible study group for three or four people has grown into a big church. And uh, even as we celebrate the goodness of the Lord, I just want to thank the Lord personally that indeed he has enabled us to serve in this, in this vineyard. In 2016, that fellowship, the first fellowship died out. But in 2016, it started again. We started meeting in Mlimani at the office of the First Lady to the county. We met there until 2021. So from 2021, we've been meeting at ATS at Sitam Itale Fellowship. So over the years, we've seen the faithfulness of God increasing us in number, increasing us in the spiritual growth. We've been receiving pastoral care from Sitam Eldoret, and we've been trusting God that we will have a resident pastor in this place. We have seen this growth of this church with leaps and bounds. We are greatly honored and we thank God for everything that the church has decided to recognize the presence of Sitam Kitale, which we hope shall grow in leaps and bounds until it is officially planted. Now we can see what the Lord has done. A small Bible study group actually now growing to become a full church. We are grateful for what the Lord has done for us. We managed to do missions in this place. We have also managed to visit children's homes around. We've been able to reach the community by doing evangelism in the estates, reaching out to students staying within the ATS, and these are the JQuad students. We look forward to doing more exploits for the kingdom, especially when we have the leadership of the pastor. With the growth of this work that the Lord has begun here, uh, we have seen the impact impact in the immediate community. We have had to reach schools through PPI programs. We have reached the local colleges, the Kitale Technical for that matter. Today, the 14th day of April 2024, we are grateful because we are receiving our first lead pastor, Reverend Joseph Kamau Mugua, who has been sent to us from Sitam Nakuru. Now that we have a pastor and the pastoral leadership and pastoral care, people shall be taken care of spiritually and we shall receive the pastoral care that will take us to the greater heights of knowing God and making him known. I'm personally honored and greatly happy and I thank God because this is an answered prayer. We are grateful to sit on Eldoret. We thank the Lord for everything. See what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. What we have prayed for, he has accomplished it at his own appointed time. Thank you so much. We give God the glory. You gave us the authority in your son, in the mighty name of Jesus. And this morning, our Father, Lord, receive all the praise in this place. We pray that in this place, may it be full of your praises, O oh God. May it be full of worship. We ask of you this morning, our Father, that you may accept our worship today. That as we come to you in thanksgiving, we acknowledge the fact, O oh Lord, that we are still living in sin, O oh God. We are still sinners, our Father, Lord. The Bible tells us that if we claim not to sin, O oh God, we make you a liar, Jehovah, Lord, because we know the entire human race is sinful, O oh God. But by your grace this morning, we can defeat sin by the power of the blood of Jesus, by his power in the cross, in the mighty name of Jesus. This morning, we have defeated sin. That is why this morning, O oh Lord, you qualified us to be the righteousness of God. And so, Father, this morning, O oh God, we repent of our sins, our Father. We repent, Jehovah God, of any wrongdoing that we have committed against your will, O oh God. Have mercy upon us today, Lord. And forgive us, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. And cause us today, Lord, to experience your manifestation. Cause us today to experience your power in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, everlasting Father, that, God, we are experiencing you in newness this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are setting for us a new testimony today of what you are doing to us, oh God. Of what you are doing in our families, our Father. Of what you are doing in our families. Fellowship, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, that today, our Father, Lord, you are even causing a great revival among us, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, for what you are yet to accomplish, oh God. And because of that, our Father, we are here to glorify you, Lord. Because of that, our Father, Lord, we are here to thank you, oh God. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we bless you. 
we honor you. I want us this morning to trust God that as we, ex as we experience this commissioning service today of our incoming reverend, let us trust God that this will bring forth a revival. Not only a revival in our church, but also in the entire city, in the entire county. Let us pray that they, today we are going to be revived. Those of us who are having talents and abilities that we are not utilizing them for the glory of God, today, in the name of Jesus, we are experiencing a revival. Can you pray for yourself and say, God, today I want you to revive me. Today I want to experience you in newness. Oh, Father God Almighty, this is my prayer this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, that Father, that God Almighty, as we have this service today, my Lord, you are reviving us as a church. In the mighty name of Jesus, we want to experience you again today in a very different way, my Father, in a very powerful way, Jehovah God, in the way that we have never seen before. In the mighty name of Jesus, today, Jehovah God, you are bringing forth our Father, Lord, a revival, Jehovah God, that will serve your purposes in this county, Lord, in then and beyond our Father, that will impact the nearby counties, that will impact the frontier missions, my Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray that today my Father, you are setting an history for this church, in the mighty name of Jesus, that we are not going to remain the same, we are not going to operate on the same level, because today my Father, you are doing something new, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for a revival this morning. I pray that everybody attending this fellowship today shall experience you in a different way. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the ministration of your word, we will experience you, Lord, differently, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray everlasting Father that God bring forth a revival in this place, oh God. Cause men this place to come to you, Lord, and kneel before the living God. May people come to you from different places, Lord. May they come to you with a hunger for you, Lord. May they come to you, Lord, with a hunger of worship of the living God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray to our God Almighty that people that are attending this service today, my Father, they will experience a revival that will cause our Father the lifting of their abilities, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, their talents of our Father Lord, they are experiencing you again this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we bless you, Lord. We bless you because you have had our prayer. Jehovah God, we desire again, Lord, that we may experience you again, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. We bless you, God. We praise you because you are alive this morning. Thank you because you are a great God. I want us this morning, as we continue praying, I want us to ask God that he will give us a unity of purpose. As a fellowship, we shall be united in one accord. That his spirit, the spirit of the living God, shall give us and that prayer, we have it in John 17, that they, that they may all be in one accord as we operate under the Lordship of our Lord Jesus Christ. This morning, I want you to open your mouth to God and tell God, give us that unity of purpose. Help us, God, to operate in unity. Father God Almighty, that which will cause us to love you more and more is what we desire this morning. That unity of purpose that will help us, Jehovah God, to love one another unconditionally, Lord, as you have loved us, O oh God, to give our lives for each other, Jehovah God, in the mighty name of Jesus. That is what we desire for our church this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, that all of us shall live out the vision that you've given us. We shall live out the mission that you've given us, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray that there will be nothing that will separate us. We pray that there will be nothing, oh God, that will contradict with our unity, oh Lord. That will bring any form of disunity, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray everlasting Father that your church 
shall be united in the name of Jesus Christ. We know Jehovah God, even in the times of the early church in the book of Acts, what caused the growth of the church is the unity that they had, oh God. We pray that this morning, oh God, you are giving us such a unity, my Father. We are experiencing such a unity, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, that we will live in one accord, my Father. We will live under one authority, oh Lord. All of us will be submitted to you, oh Lord. All of us will be guided by your Lordship, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, that none of us shall wander away from your course. None of us shall wander away from your purpose, in the mighty name of Jesus, because, Lord, it is your desire that we may, may remain united. It is our desire, Jehovah God, that we may experience the unity that is in the Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, the everlasting Father, that caused this unity to happen, oh God. May it happen today, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. May it happen every other day, Lord. May our leaders of our Father be united in one goal. May they be united in one purpose, together with the members. May we be united in one purpose, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we glorify you, Lord, because we know there is nothing that is hard with you, Lord. There is nothing that is impossible with you, Lord. We pray that in that unity, my Father, you will cause us to obey you, Lord. You will cause us to grow in you, Lord, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, my Father and my God, that you will make our hearts of our Father be submissive to you, my Father, that we may obey you all the time, O oh God. We may be diligent enough, O oh God, to do that which you expect of us in the mighty name of Jesus. As a church, we pray the hope of God. We know, King of all glory, that what we desire among us, Lord, is your unity of our Father. What we desire among us, Lord, is your presence to walk with us, O oh God. What we desire, Jehovah, in the mighty name of Jesus, is your presence to accompany us, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. So, Heavenly Father, we pray this morning that, God, you will continue blessing us, Lord. You will continue uniting us, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. You will enable us, Abba Father, Lord, to experience this unity, Abba Father. In our safari groups, Abba Father, it will be a place of love, Abba Father. It will be a place of showing love to one another, practicing love in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, as you have loved us, Abba Father, we pray that this love shall be evident among us, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we bless your name, O oh God. We bless you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You are worthy, Redeemer. I want us this morning, praise the name of the Lord. Those who have joined, just joined us, hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Team from Eldoret, praise the Lord. I want us to pray for this day. Can you tell your neighbor this day? This day. And first I want us to pray. I want us to pray for God's protection on our roads. I know we have people coming from Eldoret. We have people coming from Nairobi. Even as far as Nairobi. I want us to pray for God's protection. I want us to pray today that God is going to minister to our hearts. I know each one of us is expectant. We are expectant of the Lord this morning. And so let us ask God this morning that he may minister to us. Let us also pray. Let us also pray for the minister of the word. Let us also pray for the ministry that will be taking place today. In the name of Jesus, we want to experience the Lord. I want to ask you that you pray with me in line with those that I've mentioned in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray this morning, O oh God. It is you that protects us, Jehovah God. It is you, O oh Lord, that safeguards our life, my Father. I want to pray in the name of Jesus, particularly Jehovah God, for our roads, our Father, Lord. God Almighty, we have experienced 
So many accidents, oh God. We have experienced people losing lives, our Father. Families have lost beloved ones, oh God. Churches have lost members, our Father, Lord. And so this morning, in the name of Jesus, we are praying for protection on our roads. In the name of our Lord, we pray for our highways, our Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, my Father, that our roads are protected. In the mighty name of Jesus, this morning, morning, oh God. We remember our very own, our Father. Them that are traveling from different places to join us in this fellowship today. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for protection, oh God. I speak your word of protection, our Father that they will come safely to our place. They will come safely to this fellowship today and they will return back home safely in the mighty name of Jesus. We know they are using different means of transport, our God, but we pray for protection. We plead for your mercy, Lord. We plead for your protection in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God Almighty, I pray that today our Father, Lord, in this service, our Father God, you are going to minister to us, oh God. God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we want a fellowship with you this morning. We want a fellowship entirely with you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, we pray for every ministry, our Father, Lord, that shall be ministered in this place, our Father. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ that may you accomplish nothing but your will today. I want to pray for the ministers, oh God, that will be joining us today, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, you are doing it, oh God, to the glory of your name, my Father. We pray everlasting, Father, God Almighty, that in our session of worship, oh God, in every form of ushering, oh God, that will be taking place, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray that you may is that to us, oh God. We thank you even for your word this morning. The word that you have prepared to us, oh God, through our regional overseer, my Father. We pray in the name of Jesus that may your word come to us, our Father, Lord, in a way that we will understand, in a way that we will comprehend, oh God, and understand and know your will, our Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray this morning, our Father, you speak to the young, our Lord, speak to the young men in this place. We pray for our youth today that you are speaking to them, our Father. We pray for the men and women who are here this morning. Father, speak to them, our Father, Lord. Speak to our children today, my Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you praise, Jehovah, Father. We worship you, Lord. We thank you, Father, that it is such a day, O oh God, that we have waited for it. Jehovah God, when we heard of this announcement, oh God, our hearts have always been yearning for this day, oh God. We have always been praying for this day, Lord. We have always been seeking you for the sake of this day. And today, Lord, we are here to experience what you have prepared for us. Today we are here, Lord, to experience your manifestation and your presence in this service, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I want to thank you today, my Father God, that God Almighty Lord, even for our very own, our lead pastor, Reverend Kamau, oh God. Thank you for bringing your servant to us, oh God. Thank you at such a time, oh God, you gave him this assignment to him, Lord, that he may come to sit on Kitale Fellowship. Lord, we are so grateful that you answered our prayer by bringing him to us, oh dear Father. And so, Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that as he takes up the mantle, oh God, of serving you in this church, Father, we pray for blessing upon his life. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray for his family, my Father. We pray for his children, our Father, that they will have a good time in your presence in this place, my Father, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray to Jehovah God that as we continue fellowshipping together with him, Lord, you will bestow your hand of blessing upon him, Lord. Your hand shall be upon him, my Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we love you, Jehovah Father, we thank you, Redeemer God, for who you are this morning, oh God. We bless your name because of this service. We don't take it for granted, Lord, that you have made it possible for us to, for it to happen today, my Father. I thank you, Lord, that it is all about your will, oh God. 
I thank you because of your servants that you brought them from different places. We glorify your name because of that. We glorify your name because of what you are doing today. We glorify your name, Jehovah God, because of our service this morning. May your will be done, O oh God. I pray that everybody that comes in this service today shall experience you, O oh God, shall be under your Lordship, our Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We bless you because, Lord, you have been so good to us. We thank you because even today, my Father, you are speaking to each one of us. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. As we bring this to a close, I want us to pray. I want us to pray for today's service. As we remember, particularly the commissioning that will be taking place. Let us pray in the name of Jesus that everything that is going to happen will be of God. Let us pray for the minister. Let us pray for everybody, even the moderators. The moderators that will be leading us today. The praise and worship that will be leading us. The instrumentalists. Our sounds. Father, we commit them to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray for a smooth running of the service. We pray in the name of Jesus, my God, that everything that we have trusted in you to happen in this service, Lord, shall happen in accordance to your will. I pray, Jehovah God, for our ministers, our praise and worship team, Lord. Father, may they be used of you to minister to your congregation, Lord. May they be used of you, Jehovah God, to bless us, Lord, with songs, our Father, Lord, that we lift your name on high, O God. I thank you for our moderators. In the name of Jesus, I pray that as they will be taking us from one session to another, Lord, they will be used of you, Lord, under your authority in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father God Almighty, everything that is happening this morning in your church, O oh God, it shall be to the praise of your name. We thank you, Jehovah God, even for the commissioning service, Lord. As our pastor is being commissioned to this great work, Father, we pray, God Almighty, that may this even bring a new strength in him, Lord. May this bring forth a new power in him, Lord. That as he takes up this responsibility, Lord, he will be full of you, Lord. He will be full of your spirit, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you even for your servant as he shares to us. Father, I pray for him in the name of Jesus that use him, Lord, to the glory of your name, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus that may it be unto him, Lord, but may it be unto you according to your will in his life. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, and we bless you. We thank you that your presence is with us, O oh God, because you have promised never to leave us never to forsake us, oh God. And that gives us confidence to pray. That gives us confidence to seek you, Lord. Because we know when you seek you, you always hear us, oh God. And you not only hear us, Jehovah, but you always answer our prayers, oh God. And so this morning we come to you surrendered, Lord. This morning we come to you surrendered to your Lordship. That Father, take full control of our church. Take full control of our service, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Can I hear people clapping to the Lord? Can I hear people celebrating to the Lord? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen. Bwana asifiwe sana. We want to have a moment to acknowledge our God and King. He's here. He's the one that has gathered us here. And his presence is here with us. And so help me just as we <clears throat> allow God to use us. You can take a minute and tell God, thank you for bringing you here. Tell him thank you for organizing this service for us. Tell him thank you that he gave us journey masses as we travel to come here. Tell Jesus thank you. He deserves our praise and glory and worship this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, Heavenly Father, we are grateful. We are grateful for organizing this day for us. Indeed, this is the day that you have made uh, that we may rejoice and be we celebrate your presence and your grace in this place in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for bringing to us our friends and uh, <clears throat> members all the way from Nakuru. They traveled, oh God, most of them at night and arrived safely. We give you praise for giving them journey masses. Thank you for those who travel from Eldoret. Thank you, Lord. For those that travel from Kisumu and Kakamega and other places of this country and they are here this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we are persuaded that you are doing a new thing in this place. You are doing a new thing in this county, oh God. This is the time that we are here to celebrate what you are doing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> we pray for all who are coming to this service, oh God. That is, you speak to us through your servant. May you bring to us a message that you have anointed and activated. That all of us who hear your voice today may be persuaded by your message, our Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, may those who are coming and they are unwell find the healing from the wells of the Spirit of the living God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, those who come before you and are discouraged this morning, may they be encouraged by your spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, indeed we are persuaded that you are doing a new thing in this place. And we can see it unfolding in this church, oh God. And because of that, we celebrate you. We celebrate for the church that is happening here. Thank you for the hundreds and thousands that you are going to save. Thank you for those that you are going to deliver from darkness. Thank you for those that you are going to heal and save from addictions. In the name of Jesus Christ, we love you, our Father and our God. We love you, our Father and our God. For you are here. May you receive all the praise, the honor and glory. For you deserve all of it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yep. Come on, clap those hands like this. Yep, yep. Come on. God is doing a new thing. Let's sing. Rivers. Rivers in the desert. Highway in the wilderness. More than we could understand. God is doing a new thing. Letting go of yesterday, looking at what's ahead, stepping into greater days, God is doing a new thing.
the Lord has been great and his faithfulness and mercy are new every morning to us. The moderator said we have sat for too long. Can we please be upstanding? Uh, hallelujah. Amen. Yes, slowly dance to the Lord. Maji mengi au moto Uniachi Uniachi Unalitu wa jina langu wewe bwana Uniachi hey, Baba wewe Unatengeneza njia hata mito kule jangwani Kule jangwani hey. Wewe ndiwe alfa na omega Uniachi, Mama 
sababa wanaweza kunikana kunikana marafiki na wanaweza nigeuka mara 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 kwa mara maadui wanizunguka wanizunguka kama e baba nitaishi kwa hadi yako bwana unia karibu kitale asante bwana asifiwe praise the lord i thought you should say a big amen praise the lord amen it's a great joy to be here and uh, to have landed in kitale i don't know whether it's only kisumu but also kitale and i'm grateful to god to see all of us who have come and therefore we have landed in Kitare from Nakuru and we are now living here and we are really grateful that God has given us this chance. I know we'll talk more but I would want to introduce I think I'll begin with the children then my very own wife will be clowning it over. So we begin with our first born son who is in form 1 uh, Jones uh, to say Jambo. Praise God. Amen. Praise God again. Amen. My name is John Smutho. I'm the firstborn of this family. And it will be a pleasure to serve with you as we continue knowing you and fellowshipping with you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord again. Um, my name is Tovia Wangare. Second born of this family, I am glad to be here. Thank you for welcoming us to Kitale. It is a pleasure to be part of your fellowship and I can't wait to minister and fellowship with you more. Right. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord again. Amen. My name is Jan and JJ and I'm the and I'm the last born and I and I and I thank you for welcoming us to Kitale. Amen. Amen. And this is my wife. We just celebrated. I think when we moved to Kitare, it was our anniversary on Friday. Uh, 16 years together. And so I welcome you. Wanaiswa Peresifa. Praise the Lord. Uh, we bless the Lord this morning as a family for what he's doing in this season. My name is Rachel Kamau, and uh, I am born again. The Lord is a savior of my heart. We are convicted in our spirits that the Lord is already in this place. We have been following lately, and of course, from the history part, and we see the Lord is at work. We are just honored to join the team and to be part of what the Lord is already doing in this fellowship and even beyond. So thank you so much for the welcome, for accepting us. We believe that the Lord will be together with us as we grow together and see what he's about to do in this region. When the year began, we didn't know that our new territory is Kitare. But we are really excited. We used to tell God, yes, we are going to the new territory. We didn't know it will come this fast, but we are excited. Together with us, I have my elder brothers uh, and my elder sisters who are here together with us. Our parents left us some time back, but we have Reverend Anthony who is together with us, the Administrative Secretary of Nakuru Diocese Anglican Church of Kenya, together with his wife, maybe he can wave. Or you can come, come kindly, Helen, come. Uh, and I know I have my nephew, and then one of them will say something. And uh, we are really grateful uh, that we have two teams as a family, and I know he will be saying that, uh, two events that are happening today. Uh, thank you very much. The leadership of Sitam here in Kitari. Buonais was God is good. All the time. And all the time. Like my brother Reverend has said, we have come here on behalf of the family. I'm here with my wife, Tabitha. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I have my elder sister, who is also a sister to the pastor. We have our last born son here. Praise God. Amen. Praise God again. My name is Joshua Joel and, the, and may the Lord bless you. So as my uh, brother has said, uh, we have come here on behalf of the rest of the family to wish our brother all the best, that God is going to use him and to fulfill the purposes of God which our God has called him to come here in Kitari to minister the word of God. Also, as an elder brother to him, I can say, he's a very passionate person about evangelism and preaching the gospel. I think since he left university, there is nothing else he has done apart from preaching the gospel. We were trying to challenge him to look for a job, but he refused completely. So I know he's fully dedicated to God, together with his wife and the family. Na tumekuja hapa kumuombea neema ya mungu, na kwamba mungu ataeza kumbariki. We also have our elder brother who is older than us. Uh, part of the, we are six siblings in the country and one is outside the country. The rest of the family today is in Malindi. We have our elder brother who is ordained, to, who is being ordained today to become a pastor. Na kwa hivyo tuka gawana. Wengine wakaenda Malindi. Na sisi tukakuja hapa kwa the basket. Imeza mekana ni basket of God. The bread basket of God. Just like Bethlehem. Na kwa hivyo tunashukuru mungu sana. Uh, as my brother has said, I serve with the Anglican Diocese of Nakuru as the administrative secretary. In fact, today we were supposed to have a meeting in Nyeri where we have a retirement of the Bishop of Nyeri. But um, I bring greetings to you from our Bishop-elect, 
Bishop Mambo and the rest of the team that is there. We send very warm greetings to you and even as you take up the mantle here in Kitani. So God bless you. We are indeed very grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I really appreciate my team from Nakuru. We have served together for five years. God bless you. I've seen HOD, Zeldas, and everybody else. God bless you so much. Asante. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, before we pray, let me put someone on the spot. He's both Elder Don. We just want to come and say a word. I, I, I guess you're also dreaming about Kitale. Elder Don served as the secretary to the council, the people who normally order a document popularly known as Good Morning Sitam. <laughs> After careful consideration, or oh, prayerful consideration. So, uh, any consideration you want to make this morning? <laughs> Praise God. And uh, is it Good Morning Sitam? <laughs> Good afternoon. Um, we want to praise God for this occasion. When I was in the council, I'm now, uh, and just for uh, correction for the terms, I'm a standing elder. Those who are still in office are sitting elders. Okay? So I am a standing elder because I'm retired. If you are retired, you're an elder, you're a standing elder. If you're, that is just for... <laughs> Evelyn there would uh, support me in this. Old school uh, rules, uh, guidelines. Now, I just want to thank God. While I was still in council, we had actually thought about this process. Uh, we birthed the process while I was still in council about the progression from safari group to fellowship to church plant and then onwards to assembly. In fact, we're going to have different kinds of assemblies. There's the antelope, there's the giraffe, and there's the elephant. But you'll get to know about those later on as they happen. But I thank God because at that time we had actually thought about Kitale. Not because I reside in Kitale, which I do, but I thank God that we thought about it. And um, during the process of thinking about Kitale, perchance we interviewed many people. And I want to say that the Reverend here was one of the people we interviewed as a pastor when I was in council. So I thank God that uh, we made a good choice. I can see God went ahead of us, even as you've said. So, so uh, I want to just pray that the Lord will actually continue to do his bidding through our pastor here, through the leadership, uh, who are very able. I've come here, and you notice, uh, senior, I've taken a back seat, although you put me in front there taken a back seat because they're more than able. I really thank God for all of them. I thank God for yourself too. So mine is just to bless them. Before I finish, I should just say I did not travel alone. I noticed my wife decided to sit very far across there, but I can see her even from her. She can just wave at us. Thank you. God Amen. bless you. Amen. So finally, one of these leaders. We want to say, one of you just say whether you are ready to receive this pastor before I commission him or I go back with him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can go back with him, you know. Yes, I can, yes. Oh, okay, no. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again. Hallelujah. Yes, our region of us here. We are very, very ready to receive our lead pastor this afternoon. Amen. Now, because they are ready to receive the pastor, I must do what I came to do to commission him and so that he can take over the work here in Sitam Kitale. I therefore want them to kneel and ask the regional committee members. Each one of us lay hands on each one of them and then uh, I'll be asking Elder Philip to lead us in this prayer. May I request that we all stand. Just stand someone last born here needs some touch here. 
Shall we all just rise up and maybe we just declare the word? Just declare a word for these dear ones. They come to serve in this land. They have left everything, literally everything to come to Kitale. May we pray that the grace of God will be sufficient for them. That God will lead them and guide them. And they come to serve in this new land. That in this land, the Lord will not only prosper their ministry, but it shall also prosper the work of their hands. Their personal lives shall prosper. We worship you, Lord, give you praise, give you glory and honor, O God. May your servants, Lord, prosper. May your servants, Lord, succeed, Lord. May your servants, Lord, find joy and fruitfulness, O God, in this land, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so, Lord, on this 14th day of April 2024, mm. We are seeing a new move mm. of the Spirit. Mm. The Lord has begun a new work here. Mm. And Lord, we accept mm. your will, Lord, mm. that an assignment has begun here. Yes, and so, Lord, as your servant kneels here, mm. Lord, they are kneeling before you. They are saying, Lord, that the journey uh, can only be possible if you lead the way. Mm. And so, Lord, we pray, mm. and we are praying with them, Lord, that on this day, Lord, as you release them, Lord, to take over mm. the duty of leading yes. uh, the work that you began here, we pray that grace goes before them. We pray that favor goes before them. We pray that fruitfulness goes before them. We pray that victory goes before them. Lord, they will see mountains melt before them. They will see the hand of the Lord break the unbreakable in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, on this day, we pray and trust, Lord, that, Lord, there will be a great harvest in Kitale. And so, Lord, we commend this one's Lord before your hand. Lord, our reverend and his family, we commend him, Lord, before your hand, Lord, as they take over this work, Lord. We pray that your presence, Lord, will go before them in the name of Jesus. Lord, through their hand, life will thrive. We want to declare right now that nothing will die in these hands. Nothing will die in these hands. Yes. They will see life. They will see fruitfulness. They will see growth in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And right now we stand against the wicked one. The schema, we stand against him right now in the name of Jesus that you will not bring confusion. We rebuke your dirty hands, we rebuke your tricks, we rebuke you in the name of Jesus that these ones will see the Lord and not the confusion of the enemy. And so, Lord, we declare this day that, Lord, in this new beginning, as they take new territories, Lord, they will see the hand of the Lord. Grace and favor goes before you. Grace and favor goes before you. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Hallelujah. we pray that ministry will accept you. That, Lord, that this land will accept you. Yes, in the name of Jesus, Hallelujah. we rebuke the spirit of rejection. In the name of Jesus, as you do ministry here, as you evangelize, people will come to the Lord. And Kitale will grow. Kitale will grow. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Father Lord, we know that Kapenguria is beaconing. Mm. A few weeks ago, a contingent came from Kapenguria and they were knocking here in Kitale. Lord, you'll give this one's wisdom yes. that, Lord, besides Kitale, they will expand. They will expand to the neighborhood. West for court. They will go as far as the Lord gives you grace. And so may the Lord go for you. May the Lord grace you. May the Lord give you favor. We pray, trusting, and everybody say, Amen. Uh, and now, uh, Brother Joseph, together with your family, 
We now commission you to this work here in Kitale. The name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. So the rest of the, uh, the elders, you can go and sit. Let me now allow these ones to receive them officially. Amen. Coral, please, you should be here by now. I thought you have been given an opportunity to do another song. Is that so? Yes, yes, yes. Tunataka kuona kama mna kuanga tayari kama efa ready. Ama pasta abude alikuwa na chichocha tu. See what I love down.
am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes first for the Jew then for the Gentile verse 17 says for in the gospel a righteousness from God is revealed a righteousness that is by faith from first to last just as it is written the righteous shall live by faith a little bit when you think about the church in Rome it is said that the church in Rome was a church worthy of God it was a church worthy of honor it was a church worthy of praise it was a church worthy of purity it was a church that was so preeminent in love and bearing the father's name and that's a church that Paul is writing to and saying, I am eager also to come and preach there. It was a lovely place to preach. And this Paul, in declaring that, he says, part of the reason he's eager to actually uh, declare that, he says, I am not ashamed of the gospel. And he gives two reasons why he's not ashamed of the gospel. Number one, he says that it is the power of God for salvation. Praise the Lord. That in the gospel that we preach, that's where there lies the power of salvation. That's where there is power to change the world. That's where lies the power to transform young people, children, old men, and young men, and, old, and young ladies, and everyone. That there is the power of God for salvation. But secondly, he, the reason he says that he's not ashamed of the gospel is because it is the foundation of faith and righteous living. Praise the Lord. That if without the gospel we have no faith, and without the gospel there is no righteousness. Now you think about that, then the essence of this proclamation, what Paul is actually saying, he's saying three critical things. That he's saying without the gospel there is no faith. Praise the Lord. Without the gospel, there is no faith. There is no way people are going to believe in God. There is no way people are going to leave the, e the ways of evil and follow God if the gospel is not going to be preached. We can pray and say, Oh, God change the world. God change the politicians. God change our leaders. But as long as we are not preaching to them, they are not going to change because the power to change the power of faith lies in the gospel of Jesus Christ the Bible says elsewhere faith comes by hearing and hearing what the word of the Lord so without the gospel if we are not going to preach then we and we will forget about people coming to church and coming to the Lord and so as long as we are here and having it nice singing to God and to ourselves, quoting scriptures to God. <laughs> you didn't hear that. You know, many times I and I love the, 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 the a lot of Pentecostals. I love I, I'm a Pentecost and I love that. And I know sometimes when you go to prayer, sometimes you pray, you're like we quote scriptures to God and remind God. Oh, what he has said, Lord, you have said in your word, and we say it with a swag, Lord, you have said it in your word, hallelujah, God, you have said it again, hallelujah, and you said it elsewhere, hallelujah. And we end up quoting more scripture to God than to people who are perishing who need to hear the scripture. And so we are gathered in church quoting scriptures to our souls and to God. Let me tell you, my friends, God is, no, is in no need of preaching. God doesn't need to hear his word. His word is God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The people out there in the world who are perishing need to hear this one so that they can come to faith and they can come to repentance and they can come to salvation in Jesus' name. And we have a responsibility as believers to preach the gospel that faith will come upon the world and people will believe in Jesus and be born again. Hallelujah. 
The essence, the second essence about that is that without faith, there is no righteousness. <laughs> Hallelujah. Without preaching the gospel, there is no faith. And without faith, there is no righteousness. That's what Paul is saying. Through this preaching of the gospel, through this gospel, there is a righteousness that comes from God. You and I are aware that we are living in a world where there is a lot of evil. A lot of evil. A lot of things are happening. And again, I have already noted, many times we decide that our children will change. We decide that our parents will change. We decide that our leaders may change. But you know, unless they get an encounter with God, unless they get an encounter with the gospel, they cannot be able to attain righteousness. And so we have a responsibility, church. We have a responsibility to preach the gospel so that People may come to faith. And when they come to faith, they will attain righteousness. And the Bible says the righteous shall live by. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. So we can pray as much as we can. But we must leave the prayer room and go and declare the gospel. Hallelujah. I'm not saying we should not pray. In fact, Jesus prayed and he was God. And he prayed a lot. But after prayer, what did Jesus do? He went for a crusade. <laughs> Jesus did not wait for the multitudes to come to him. He went over. And even sometimes when the, 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 the disciples were like, this is a nice place. He remembered the transfiguration. When it was a wonderful, glorious experience happened. <laughs> and you know the disciples say, Hey, Jesus, this place is so wonderful. <laughs> they say, let's build how many shelters? Three. One for Moses, one for Elijah, and one for you. Now these guys were very clever. <laughs> they didn't want anything for themselves. But they wanted to take shelter. I guess they wanted to take shelter in the one belonging to Jesus. So that they don't pay rent. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and they knew the, G the Jesus tent must be stable. It cannot be destabilized in any way. And what did Jesus say? Hallelujah. You must go back. There is work out there. It's not in the mountain. We must go back there. Hallelujah. And sometimes, you know, he wanted to go out. And, you know, it's like, you know, they were saying, he said, Jesus, remain behind. He said, I can't be here. People are perishing. Let me, let us go to the other side. Jesus was praying. He had a wonderful time. But he, in the wonderful moment in time, he will arise and go out and reach out to sinners and preach the gospel to them. Church, we must arise from the comfort of our church and arise and say, we shall go and declare the word of God. For that is what we have been called to. To know God and to make him known through evangelism. And Paul says another third thing. That the gospel carries that validating or it carries the validating and quashing power. In other words, the gospel is what validates you to be a child of God but the gospel also pushes the other powers. And actually, that's what we need. If we are going to contend with the powers of darkness in this world, we must have the gospel power together with us. Am I speaking to someone? Am I speaking to someone? That through the gospel, we can be able to become powerful men and women of God. The gospel has the capacity to turn nothing into something and to turn something into nothing. Oh, did you get that? The gospel we preach has the capacity to turn nothing into something and turn something into nothing. And if you are doubting that, I want to declare to you that you are a testimony of that statement. <laughs> Because the Lord has changed you. Look at you. I'm saying look at you. Now why are you looking at me? Look at you. <laughs> look at yourself. Hallelujah. 
You know, God has turned around, has turned us around. We are a walking testimony. I keep saying this over and over again, that if it were not for Jesus changing some of us right here, many of us will be already dead. Some of you seated here will be somewhere in committing maximum prison. Not minor prison, maximum prison. But see what the Lord has done. See how the Lord has changed you. Ay, my goodness. You know, I keep telling myself, you know, you know, I came from the village. I was born in a village, somewhere down in Bumula, in Bungoma. And there we don't speak good English. We don't. It's so queen and And then here I come from the village. In fact, my village was just found on Google the other day. When Google started you Google, then it asks you, has Google ever asked you questions? Did you mean? Hey, you give not on a stupid gadget. I must I'm telling you Bukirimo. Then you're asking, did you mean and is asking me a city in the US and I'm asking to go to my village? It should know my village. It didn't know my village. I came from that village and I find myself in a church called Christ is the answer. Sit down. Oh my goodness. An English speaking church. <laughs> and they speak good English. And I end up in the mother church. Satan Valley Road. You stand up to speak, and there are 3,000 people looking at you like this. And sometimes they're like, hey, before you get an amen, you must drop a real point. <laughs> and I find myself there and I'm preaching and I'm, the first time I stepped in that church I was attending a wedding I was at the university and Dennis White was preaching and I was sitting there and I was thinking how can a pastor how can you actually be a pastor of all these people and I thought it was an impossible thing least did I know 13 years later I was standing on that same pulpit where Dennis White was preaching and I was declaring the gospel and elders like Don here were saying Amen. And I said, Hallelujah. This can only be the doing of God. The Lord can change that thing into something. And if you think you are something without the Lord, the Lord can also change you into nothing. I've seen great men and women who have been turned around into nothing because they have denied the gospel. In the gospel there is power to validate and there is power to quash. There is power to transform. There is power to nullify. There is power in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, come on church, we need to preach the gospel. Can I give a can I give, can, can we give a shout of praise to God? He is a God that decides. <laughs> Each one of us seated here is a testimony of the transforming power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 to 21, and he says, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, <laughs> it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. The intelligence of the intelligent, I will frustrate. Eh? No, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. Hmm. The intelligence of the intelligent, I will frustrate. And then he asked the question, a very rhetoric question. Where is the wise man? Where is the scholar? 
Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? Praise the Lord. Now, when you think about this, my brothers and sisters, you need to realize that what, for instance, we need in this country is not more scholars. What we need in this country is not more politicians. What we need in this country is not more intelligent people. What we need in this country is people who submit to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because you have realized that even education doesn't really change the soul, the heart of man. Once in our preaching, I remember I think I was a university student then, we were doing a mission in Kapsabit. 19... 93 thereabouts and we went to witness in a hospital Kapsabe district hospital and we met a man in the hospital a doctor who a doctor and he's smoking he's smoking Sasa huyo masome mumsaidia kweli? Ha? Hiyo masomo hata yakuwa mpaka daktari nimemsaidia kweli. Yaani imeandikwa hapo mpaka kwa pakiti ya sekara imeandikwa onyo kutoka kwa wizara ya afya. Sasa huyu ni daktari anafanya kazi na kulipwa mshahara na wizara ya afya. Wizara ya afya ndiyo imetoa onyo kwenye paketi ya sigara ya kwamba ufutaji wa sigara huturu afya yako <laughs> unashika hiyo point na anavuta yeah tena go hospital mahali anatakana kutibu watu sasa hata yeye anasambaza you know secondary smoking is more dangerous than primary smoking then i realize my friend Sio masomo itabadilisha watu. Si masomo itabadilisha watu. Si utajiri itabadilisha watu. Si ile kiti itabadilisha watu Kenya hii na katika ulimwengu mzima ni kitu kimoja inaitwa injili. Hallelujah the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what will turn a man not so that you cannot be frustrated. So what is going to change the world is the gospel. Is the gospel. I'm saying is the gospel. If there anything that our world and our country needs today is the gospel of salvation. It carries all the power we need to change our world. And therefore the call today. Let us lift up the banner of Christ in this city of Kitale. Let us lift up the banner of the gospel in this city of Kitale. Hallelujah. That's what we have come to do in this city. If you ask what have we come to do? We have simply come to proclaim Jesus Christ. Elder Don, you remember, Bishop Emeritus used to tell us many times as leadership, sometimes you go and you want to make a difficult decision. And many times you discuss around the table and you have no answer. Then you actually stop discussing and you start praying. In those moments, sometimes you get to a point and say, Christ is the answer. Christ has all the answers to even some of the things that we do not have the answers. Christ has the answer. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. We need to lift up the banner of Christ and preach the gospel. Allow me to say this, my brothers and sisters. All believers are called to evangelize. All believers are called to share the good news of the kingdom with others. And let us not be ashamed of declaring the saving grace of God. I wonder how many of us can confidently say today that I am not ashamed of the gospel. I am afraid not many of us can confidently say that. In those old days when I was young, not that I am old now, <laughs> but let me just say in the days I was a little younger, Many of us will remember 
that we identified Christians even on the street. We did. Those of you who are in the university then will know believers. Even just by looking, you will know. And beyond that, we even had badges. In, what is it called? These things we put on... Uh, what are they called? Hey, wambo, lupeleko apiako. Jesus saves. I love Jesus. Praise the Lord. Christ is the answer. We used to declare, Hallelujah. These days, these days, these days, I'm saying these days, you are lucky to find even a sticker on a believer's car. You know, we used to have those stickers, Jesus is the way. You are lost. Or something like that, find the way. We used to be proud to be believers. Praise the Lord. And I remember in the university, they used to call us names. <laughs> One of, uh, some of the funny names I was remembering the other day, some drunkards used to call us what were rap and a pencil. Rap and a pencil. So we wondered, what they were talking about. Kumbe, they were trying to mimic us when we used to pray in the powerhouse in, in tanks. So as I what Kwan is Kyan's Rabba Sakanda Rabba Senda Rabba Sanda Rabba 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 So as when I say my what were rabba na pens And we were proud to be called what were rabba na pens Kuna wakati mungine kwetu wali tuita watu wa three bob. Three bob. <laughs> Ilikuwa ni menu ya apo kwa mess ya university. Wakati ulianza kulipa chakula. Najua wengine mulienda university wakati mulikuwa mnalishu watu. Serikali kwa nawalisha. Si tukaanza kulipa. Sasa kuna three days we used to go for prayer before we go for dinner. And many times you come from prayer and you discover all the good meals. People have finished them. So you want to say, beef stew, imekwisha. Nini kuku, hakuna. So you end up with food that never used to run out from the dining hall. Ugali and mboga. Three bob. So they will see believers eating three bob all the time. They thought we were poor. They thought we could not afford beef. But it's because the time of going for beef and chicken we had chosen to go for prayer. And by the time we came from the power room, there was no chicken. There was no beef. We ate mboga na ugali. And we look like we are not healthy. <laughs> we need to be proud of the gospel. We let's go out and declare. Jesus said, Whoever acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before men, I will disown him before my Father in heaven. My brothers and sisters, we need to arise and do that which God is expecting us to do. And God is expecting us to preach the gospel. God is expecting us to reach out to sinners. God is expecting to reach out to people who do not know God, that they may come to know Jesus Christ. And I want to say the church is under siege. Our status as Christians is under serious attack. And we must do something about it. If we are not going to be proud about Christians, our children will begin to grow up and to begin following things that people are proud of because we have shied away from being proud of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Am I speaking to someone? And Jesus said, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God does what? Serves violence. And the violent take it by force. Preaching the gospel and leading others to Christ should become our ambition and passion. As we think about new territories, one of the things we must do is be passionate about preaching the gospel. Because without preaching the gospel, even this theme we have for this year, it's null and void. Because he's talking about the gospel. He's talking about preaching. And if we are not going to preach, then this theme is not valid for us. 
we must arise and declare the gospel. We must start talking about the gospel in the morning. Talk about the gospel in the noontime. Talk about the gospel in the evening. Talk about the gospel all the time. Can I hear an amen? This is the sure weapon we hold against the public and private rot that is almost swallowing us alive. Whoever thought that someone would think of lacing milk with formalin? Whoever thought? Whoever thought that a man would one day sell her stones instead of fertilizer? Whoever thought? Whoever thought that our leaders will come to our funerals and turn them into a battleground? Funerals were honorable places. But what do we see right now? People come and fight over the dead. Shame. But that, what is going to change, is not legislation. It's not. It is the gospel. It's the gospel. I'm saying no kind of legislation and policing can heal this madness. Only the gospel can change such a evil hands and minds. And that is why we must preach. I'm saying that's why we must preach. And preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. In my conclusion, I want to make some declarations here. Number one, neglect of preaching the gospel is desertion of divine duty. <laughs> Did you hear that? If you neglect the preaching of the gospel, you have decided divine duty. And indeed, you are wasting the potential that God has put in you. You know, Pentecostals, hallelujah, we speak in tongues. I've already told you how we used to be <laughs> made fun about. We have received the Holy Spirit. But what was the purpose of the Holy Spirit? What was the purpose of the Holy Spirit? Jesus said, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you speak in many tongues. Huh? <laughs> you will be my in, in Samaria and the Atma. So the fact that you have the Holy Spirit in you, God has put the potential in you and the power in you to go and preach the gospel. Praise be to God. And we should arise as believers. Let's not desert this divine duty that has been bestowed upon us. And let us not make I, I know, take nonsense or use nonsense of the spirit that God has bestowed upon us. Let us all arise and preach the gospel. The second declaration I make, being ashamed of the gospel is comparable to being ashamed of Christ, our Savior, and his kingdom. But if you are ashamed about preaching, if you are ashamed about talking about Jesus, you are literally being ashamed of Jesus himself. And Jesus himself declared, if you are ashamed of me, even me, I will reciprocate. <laughs> and you don't want the Lord to reciprocate when you get to heaven and he's ashamed of you. He say, I don't know you. And you're like, hey, bye, Papa, see, I was an usher. Nilikuwa na imba kwa choir. Nilikuwa anga pastor. Nilikuwa anga elder. Like me, you deserted your duty, primary duty. By the way, even primary duty is preaching. The third declaration I make, the salvation of souls is the most significant territory we can take this year. Happen if Kriya Kilamta Tasema, amen. The salvation of souls is the most significant territory we can take this year. And today, Sitam Kitale we want to launch you out in reaching out, preaching the gospel. Reverend Mutua, nimeambua unapenda kuubiri sana. Enda ubiri, fanya winjilisti, papa. Wana swe sana. One thing I didn't, I, I didn't say, now I can say it. 
our progression from fellowship to church plan to assembly is about numbers. Don't ask me another question. The answer is in numbers. <laughs> and see, numbers don't lie. And for the numbers to happen, the preaching of the gospel must take place. And the preaching of the gospel is not the responsibility of the pastor alone. It's not the responsibility of the leaders alone. It's the responsibility that has been bestowed upon every believer. And I want to believe that each and every one of us who is here can say, I will go and preach the gospel. Let's get, I think as a young people, you know, I've been a, a, an acting youth pastor in my assembly. <laughs> and the young people say, we want to get crazy about this thing. Let's get crazy, you know. And they say, let's get crazy about this Jesus thing. Yeah, maybe talk about Jesus and people think you are crazy, but you are normal. Talk about it like the disciples talked about it. And you know, when they, they sometimes they arrested them, they became a nuisance until they arrested them and they beat them up in public and they said, go and again, we don't want you to speak again in this name. Then they have just been beaten. Then they tell them, now choose for yourselves. Whether we obey God or we obey you. <laughs> and as you have beaten us, you have threatened us, but let it be known to you, we are not going to stop talking about this thing. And one of them, a learned man, talked to them and said, Hey, brethren, my people, these people we know, they are very simple and schooled people. But the things they are talking, <laughs> they, are, they were with Jesus leave them alone. They were left alone. That's why you and I stand here today. Because the gospel was preached by simple men who surrendered themselves to the power of God and the power of God changed them. And they world, they changed the world upside down. And that's why you and I are believers today. Many let arise and say, may your friends, may your family, may your neighbors never hear the last about Jesus until they finally say, Lord to Jesus. The final declaration I make as I conclude, we are ambassadors of Christ. We are ambassadors of Christ. And Paul says, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. God cannot preach now. God can only preach through us. God cannot witness now. He can only do this through us. And you know some places, I always say this, even some places where pastors cannot reach, but some of you here can reach. If you're in the security sector, you know you can give command to someone. You can even stop the president from driving and he will stop. You reach places where we cannot reach. And each and every one of us has been positioned uniquely. May you be an ambassador of Jesus Christ wherever you are, so that the gospel of Jesus Christ will be spread. Our time is up. But I pray that God will quicken us. Perhaps to be, I was told of a story of this revival that broke out in Scotland in the 1940s. And that declaration was issued and said, the world, our church, our country is rotting and it's not going to change until we arise as believers, as a church, and seek the Lord so that he can intervene. And a number of people, a number of churches sought to pray, and the revival came down in Scotland. And there were some people who were hard praying at that particular time, and their prayer was this, Lord, if you will not use us, please kill us. If you will not use us, kill us. In fact, what they were saying is that, Lord, we are not worth the living if we are not being used of you. We are not worth the living if we are not declaring the word of God. I pray that each and every one of us will say today, Lord, because you have given me an opportunity to live, I am going to declare the gospel. I am going to make others know Jesus Christ. The passion for taking new territories must start with our passion for souls. I was waiting for you to say Amen. Let's make a commitment today that we will serve the Lord, we will preach the gospel and make Christ known. We exist as a church to know God and make him known through discipleship and evangelism.
may that be our business in Jesus name amen and amen and amen shall we just bow before God in prayer I wonder how proud have you been as a believer I wonder whether you have been proud of preaching the gospel I wonder whether when Christ looks at you will say I am proud of you because you are doing that very thing that I call you to do our world is going to change if we are going to preach the gospel that will bring faith that will lead to righteousness and righteousness that commitment to righteousness then will lead into a holy living and the world our world will change let's pray together Heavenly Father, we bless you and honor you. Thank you, Father God, you have chosen us in this generation and time. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for you have changed us through your word. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege you have given to us, even to share in the mission to change the world. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that may each and every one of us who is here as a believer, commit themselves and to that point of saying yes Lord I'll preach the gospel I'll share the message of salvation with as many people that I interact with in my place of work I will share the gospel in my school in college I will share the gospel in my business I will share the gospel in church or wherever I will share the gospel preaching the gospel is our business May we do it so well that at the end of our lives we shall reap the fruits thereof. Help us, Heavenly Father. Lord, where we have been weak, where, Lord, we have abandoned this call, where, Lord, sometimes we've been ashamed of being identified with you, forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Heavenly Father. And the God quicken us, Lord, to be proud of being believers and standing out for you. As we continue to pray, perhaps you are here today and you are not yet born again. 